Hey there, I'm excited to announce this to you today. This is what you've been waiting for in your spiritual quest. This is something I've wanted to do for a long time, and I'm finally ready to announce it that it's ready to go. It's the Grief to Growth Community Circle. Now, this is a sanctuary where like-minded souls are united in their journey through grief and towards personal transformation. It's more than just a place. It's a beginning. It's a commitment to growth and understanding. Here you're finding not just a community, but you're entering a circle of trust and depth. You're going to engage with interactive coursework. You'll dive into exclusive podcast episodes and partake in discussions that illuminate the path from mourning to empowerment. This is a realm where every question is honored and every individual's journey is validated. To be part of this exclusive circle, visit us at grieftogrowth.com slash community or look for the chat icon at the bottom of every page on the main website. Remember that entry is a privilege because I want to ensure that every member is as dedicated and genuine as you are. You must apply to join, but the journey within is worth every step. So go ahead and join us today. Check it out, grieftogrowth.com slash community, and I look forward to seeing you there. Hey there, everybody. I uh, wanted to make a real quick uh, audio here, just kind of a little bonus, I guess, um, to share some stuff with you. I was trying to do Mindful Monday Musings. That hasn't worked out to be on Mondays, so we'll have to change the name of that. But when I get you know inspiration, I'll be dropping these little things for you. Uh, and the day I was, wanted to talk about, I've been taking this course called PQ Coaching, and it's going to be very helpful to me in my practice and also in my personal life. It's, I'm about three weeks into a seven-week program. And I'm finding some some big changes. But there's some things I've already been doing. I've been doing a gratitude practice for the last five or six years where I try to think of three things to be grateful for before I get out of bed in the morning. And I found that's made a big difference in my life. I also happen to believe that whatever happens, happens for a reason. And I was talking with someone the other day, and I know this thing kind of triggers some people because they'll say, well, this couldn't have happened for a reason. So there's two ways to believe this. One is that the universe is set up so that whatever happens is for our own good. Uh, And that you may or may not want to believe that requires a certain amount of faith. But the other thing you might want to take into consideration is whatever happens, I can find something good in it or I can make something good from it. And I'm going to go into more detail about that later uh, and give you some, some ways we can do that. There are three basic techniques to do that. But it was kind of interesting to me. Uh, I'm a big Bengals fan, as as you may or may not know. And my Bengals were in the Super Bowl for the first time since before I was married. I've been married for 31 years. The Bengals were in the Super Bowl this year. We had a, we had a great season. We had a great run. We came up a couple plays short of actually winning a Super Bowl. So I'm riding high on Monday, and I'm thinking about all the great things about the season, how we uh, finished way ahead of our expectations. Uh, I don't think anybody really gave us much of a shot to make the playoffs before the season started. We were four and twelve the year before. Uh, we were two and fourteen the year before that. Um, we were we had a quarterback who had been hurt early last season. Uh, he was showed he was great, but he was unproven. He's coming back off of a reconstructed knee. We had a suspect offensive line, so nobody really gave us a chance this year. So I'm not typically a glass half full kind of person, but this year. I said, hey, if we make the playoffs, that'll be great. We made the playoffs. um, And I said, hey, if we win one game, I'll be satisfied. We won our first playoff game. We ended up winning three games and going to the Super Bowl. So that's where we stand. So I'm talking to a friend of mine. He lives in Cincinnati also. And he was, and we were talking about the future of the Bengals. I think the future is great. I mean, we've got Joe Burrow here, one of the best quarterbacks, maybe of all time. We'll see. He's only a second year guy. But um, we've got Joe Burrow. We've got a great defense, but our offensive line is weak, you know. And I chose to focus. I choose to focus on the fact that we've got a great quarterback, that we've got a great defense, that we've got great wide receivers. We've got you no know, a really good rec- uh, running back, and we have one thing that's not really that great, right? So I'm thinking the future is going to be great, and I'm looking forward to next year. I'm talking to my friend. And he's like, yeah, but Joe Burrow, he's not going to want to live in Cincinnati. This is just a mid-market town. He's already talked about how boring it is here. He doesn't like Cincinnati chili. You know, they're not going to protect him. He's going to be gone. He's going to leave for a big market team. And basically, we're going to be back to the old Bengals that we were before. And, you know, there was a time when I thought that way. But I have to say, this really struck me that this person was being so negative 
literally one day after our team, who hadn't been to a Super Bowl in 32 years, was in the Super Bowl. And the thing is, this is what this is human nature, though. We tend, and this is me too, so I'm not I'm not criticizing anybody else's nature, but we tend to look at what's wrong rather than what's right. And I'm talking to him, and I'm trying to say to him, and I have another friend. There are actually two friends I was talking to through this. You know, Joe Burrow's got at least two more years here. He's got two years left. Two more years left on this contract. Why don't we focus on that? Why don't we focus on trying to make the best of those two years rather than immediately jumping to whatever ha- is going to happen after that? We don't know what that's going to be. Um, we we can look at it and say, well, this is not a team with a great history. This is a team that doesn't have an indoor practice facility. It's a cold weather team. It's a mid-market team. He's going to want out of here. Or we can look at it and say, he's from Ohio. He's an Athens boy. He went to Ohio State. He graduated from Ohio State. I know he played for LSU, but he graduated from Ohio State. His girlfriend is from the Cincinnati area. And these are reasons why you might think he wants to be here. We could focus on either one of these things. We can tell ourselves either of these stories, and they're equally true. So as I'm going back and forth with my friend, I realize I'm not going to convince him. He's certainly not going to convince me. It's actually a choice. It's a choice we make, and how do we choose to look at a situation? And I have to say, um, I'm really proud of myself for having made this shift over the last several years that I'm looking at it from the positive point of view. I'm looking at it thinking maybe our owner, Mike Brown, who's been a terrible owner throughout the course of my life, but maybe Mike Brown will really put some money in this team to win a Super Bowl. Maybe he will continue to invest. He's done it over the last couple of years. Uh, maybe he'll continue to do that. And that's the way I choose to look at it. So I don't want to make this all about sports. I don't want to make this all about football. There just happens to be an example that came up in my life this week. And it gave me a, an opportunity to talk to you about how we can look at things and how we can choose to focus on things. And either story is true. It's not a matter of lying to ourselves. I'm not lying to myself thinking that we're going to suddenly you know, be better next year or anything like that. I'm just choosing the, the circumstances I look at and choosing which one I want to focus on. And that's a choice that we can all make on a daily basis. So what I want to do is help everybody else kind of get there too through the coaching. I'm actually going to be putting out some training coming up here soon to try to help people practice getting in this mindset. So I've got some really exciting ideas coming up. So stay tuned for those. So that's it for me for today. I hope you found this useful. I hope you found this something that you can apply to your life. When you're looking at your future, whether it's regards to anything, there are positives and there are negatives, and you can choose to focus on either one and learn to train your mind and choose to focus on the positive. So with that, I'm going to sign off and have a great day. Hi there. I hope you enjoyed this latest episode of the podcast, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. What questions came up for you? What did you like about it? What didn't you like about it? I invite you to visit us at grief growthcircleso That's grief the number 2 growthcircleso to continue the conversation with me and with other listeners. It's a space to sound off, to share reactions, and to go deeper into the topics from the show. I look forward to chatting more, and I hope to see you there.